Hi and welcome to the Lute channel. Today we have another podcast. In this podcast we talk with lutenists about lute and early music and anything else that we want. Today I have here with me Ryosuke Sakamoto. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank you for inviting me here. It's a great pleasure. So, Ryosuke, yeah. tell us about how you started with music. With the music, yes. Um, it's a long story, indeed. But the first musical ex experience for me was when I was a small child, um, because my, both my parents uh, are, are music players. And Your parents um, are musicians? Yeah, musicians. Uh, nice. My father plays uh, viola da gamba, oh. and my mother plays the recorder. Oh, yeah. awesome. So already in the early <laughs> music. Yeah, early music. Yeah. And then, um, interestingly enough, I learned our music just by ear, yeah? mm -hmm. and then, and from medieval music. So I learned to play music by playing a long neck lute, like Turkish sass. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah. Or some, you know, a little bit smaller oud, uh -huh. so to and, say. And your parents had at home this instrument? Yeah. 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 Oh, awesome. And then, um, yeah. at that time, I, I had no idea how to read the music. Mm -hmm. so yeah, what's the... Uh, what the musical theory is, ju just, you know, from the year. And at the age of six or seven, uh, my father just, you know, came w up with the idea that, okay, why don't, you know, why don't he play the lute? Yeah. Because using the lute means, you know, he has a accompanist, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah. And it was a very intelligent <laughs> move. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this means I learned uh, the instrument from medieval music. And then I came to the Renaissance lute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite a natural thing. And yeah. then, and suddenly I f fell in love with the lute, mm -hmm. and then I started to uh, quite hard. But for mm -hmm. myself, I had no uh, strict teacher. I see. <laughs> yeah. And how old were you? At uh, that time? Well, I started playing the lute at the age of around six or seven. Wow, that's And incredible. then uh, the first time I played in the public was around with the age of eight or nine. Yeah. Wow, yeah. incredible, yeah. incredible. It's it's very unique story. Yeah, but uh, there's yeah. some other uh, student in the yeah. now, nowadays in the school that they started in. Exactly. Quite, uh, it's a yeah. very recent thing yeah. that yes, yes, now yes. there's more and more people that yeah. start start already yeah, directly already. with the lute. But as a yeah. Japanese, uh, I was quite rare, I must yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. And also I didn't uh, start the lute as mm -hmm. the first instrument, but I already did some prelude. Exactly. Uh, instrument. And exactly. then uh, through the music history. Yeah, I just. Very uh, nice. Yeah. Very um, nice. And then I learned uh, to how to read the tablature. Mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, around the age of uh, 12 or 13, I I did a bit of bark lute playing as well. Okay. And then I did uh, arch lute, the other one, something. So everything is yeah, in the yeah. right chronological yeah, order. Chronological. And then yeah, I can imagine also like for a very for, for a young kid to take already a Tiobo, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. not so practical. Yeah, practical, yeah. 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 And the Renaissance lute is perfect, yeah. It's, it's very perfect. nice yeah. and small yeah. instrument, yeah. And also, I because of my father is a gamba player, I mm -hmm. also play gamba as mm -hmm. well. And now I reached in the you know almost the ultimate period that the high and baritone music this is almost <laughs> the <laughs> end of my the end you know, of uh, my daily musical activities. I see. Really. I yeah, see. Yeah. Wow, very, yeah. very nice. This is so you started with the already in an early music <coughs> mm -hmm. family. Your parents played yeah. early music instruments. Mm -hmm. You started playing mm -hmm. very young by mm -hmm. year with your family mm -hmm. lutes. Yeah. And so you decided from very young, OK, I want to be a lute player. So my my parents were studying in in Europe for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then they moved back to Japan mm -hmm. and they worked uh, several years with the ensemble and then my father was again in Europe because he was employed as a kind of royal uh, musician uh, wow. belonged to the uh, Swedish kingdom to the Swedish, <laughs> kingdom. Swedish kingdom at that time it's a late 80s 80s wow yeah. and then there was a small uh, city called Ustad, uh, uh, uh -huh. close to Malmö, or even uh, now uh -huh. it's very close to Copenhagen as well. Uh, I lived there for three years when I was a kindergarten. Yeah. Wow. And that time, uh, in, at the time in Sweden, the early music was also a kind of big trend. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father uh, particip 
participated in a quite famous ensemble there, and they played regularly their music uh, from Renaissance to Baroque. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's really like early music, yeah. like when you were the yeah. the yeah. playing for the king. Yeah, and for the king. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. And then, so my more or less my first uh, experience as or to notice that this is our music was yeah. coming from my experience in Sweden, in Europe, not wow. in Japan. Yeah. Wow. And at the age of uh, six, I moved back to Japan, uh -huh. and then I stayed for uh, until I came back back, back to, to, Europe. to Europe again uh -huh. yeah, to study in the to study in school. Yeah. Okay. That was uh, 2008. Yeah. 2008. Uh, to yeah. 14 years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 14 years ago. Wow. So <laughs> I cannot believe. <laughs> yeah. It's when we when we start to think about time, yeah, yeah, like yeah. it gets yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so let's sum up. So your your parents in the early music, you were mm -hmm. in Sweden. Mm -hmm. Your father was working in Sweden, mm -hmm. playing early music for yeah. the king. Yeah. You were there having already first experiences. Mm -hmm. Then age six, you went back to Japan, mm -hmm. and then you stayed there mm -hmm. practicing and studying the lute and mm -hmm. developing. And then you, until you came back to Europe yeah. uh, in two thousand and eight mm -hmm. to study in scholar mm -hmm. lute mm -hmm. in, in in the scholar. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and you're always sure, okay, no, that's what I want to do, and or <clears throat> when we were getting older, mm -hmm. you were not so sure anymore. Well, I at already at the early teens, like uh, at the age of ten or eleven, I started to play in front of the public. Uh huh. Yeah. And at that time, uh, the lutenist is still quite small in amount in Japan, mm -hmm. so it means uh, I was quite busy with playing the lute. Actually. Okay. But still, I didn't think about okay, becoming a professional. A, a professional. Yeah. Uh, but there's a very interesting um, uh, meeting. How, uh, how to say? Mm -hmm. um, when I was 13, my family decided to do a kind of round tour to Europe. Europe. Okay. Yeah? So, for example, visiting the cities that we used to live in Sweden, uh -huh. or visiting uh, friends in. Mm -hmm. various country in uh, in in Europe and we did a k kind of uh, you know <laughs> uh, right. road trip a road trip and including Basel here okay at that time the bar yeah the scholar was closed because it uh, it was a summer holidays mm -hmm. but I really okay I already knew that okay, yeah. Basel is uh, this kind of a place, center center yeah. and yeah. then I took some photos there mm -hmm. uh, even this was closed battery <laughs> and okay well this is a scholar and at the end of the trip uh, I went to master class in Venice, which my future teacher means Hopkins or Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, he was teaching uh, the summer class mm -hmm. like, uh, once a year there. Mm -hmm. And I, I took his lesson. And well, that was a great moment. And um, yeah, he was very kind to me. Mm -hmm. And then he was always, you know, keen to me like, okay, what will he do in the future? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's some uh, kind of exchange between my parents and Hopi. Yeah. But okay. And nice. He's, yeah. And Already, then, yeah. yeah. But later I decided not to do the musical, uh, our music as a profession. Rather than I, I went to the college um, in Tokyo and uh, specializing in aesthetics, you know? Okay. Yeah. So how what is beauty, uh -huh. what's the meaning of uh -huh. art or something. Uh -huh. yeah. Kind of a philosophy approach? Yeah. It's yeah. a philosophy yeah. branch, yeah, yeah. Really. And then I was almost sure to go, go in that, that direction. direction. But interestingly, the two, 2004, the Hopi just came to Japan mm -hmm. to do a concert uh, with the Darren program and then doing some master class. And then, well, I was just uh, encouraged to take that class again, whereas I'm always, yeah, I'm, I was quite, uh, uh, well, sorry, I was quite distant from, from you know, the loot on that time. On that time, but okay, taking a master class with Hopi again. Why, why not? not? Yeah, he's okay. here. Yeah. Then I took uh, uh, the lesson with him mm -hmm. with a famous Nalva's piece, O Grolioza Domina, mm -hmm. which I really, mm -hmm. you know, admired his playing and interpretation and then um, at that moment i really had a good lesson mm -hmm. and then uh, again he, he encouraged me to, come to, to continue yeah continue yeah continue. and and the three years later i decided to nice. study with him nice yeah. 
and oh, that's very nice yeah. so and the that, hobby is yeah. always like, like a yeah. chain or so, he know. was like yeah. uh, the biggest motivation <laughs> yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. and then 2008 yeah. you you came to do a, a bachelor uh, well I'm lucky enough yeah. I became uh, uh, the and the day of my entrance exam I became at the age of uh, 26 that I cannot take any bachelor. Ah, oh, yeah, it's true. <laughs> so it's yeah. only... I think, yeah, I think it, they took that rule out. I think it doesn't well, exist anymore, well, yeah. But or maybe, maybe it's a bit more yeah, flexible, so flexible. But yeah, I remember. But at I remember that time, that, uh, yeah. I was too old. Yeah. But instead of that, they had uh, a system of passing a master, you, uh, you know? So mm -hmm. it's like a master with three years. Uh -huh. One additional year. Okay. And this was good for me because mm -hmm. normally for you know for Japanese and also I'm not so used to living in Europe alone this is yeah, the first yeah. time and then yeah. to, I, I needed some time to get used to mm -hmm. so uh, so this three years for the first bachelor uh, sorry well the three years for this first master mm -hmm. is a great deal for me yeah so and, the was, and the school uh -huh. offered this uh, yeah master. this possibility yeah, yeah. for you yeah and it was very good and then you did this master and you continue studying yeah uh, this is also quite lucky for me because mm -hmm. um, I did the first master concert only with uh, 16th century music. This is also rare, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's called Polyphony and Diminution. Uh, it's uh, it's a title of my latest CD. We are going to talk yeah. about it. Yeah. And uh, well, and that time, well, what day is today actually? Today is the thir uh, uh, no. 11th of March, March we yeah. are recording this yes. uh, 11th of March yeah. uh, it's it's actually a coincidence but this day is quite important for us Japanese because this is a day of the earthquake ah the biggest uh, okay and yeah. uh, at that time the, the situation in Japan is very bad uh -huh. and then that's the year that I about to finish my study in mm -hmm. Basel and I plan to go back to Japan uh, when I you study when, when I first came here in Basel mm -hmm. but this earthquake and the the later you know the Japanese uh, economic uh, situation and so on yeah, I really wonder and then I also thought about what I what I learned mm -hmm. only this in, 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 in this three years is too too short it's too short but, yeah. and then the scholar offered me uh, another two years master uh partly uh, specializing in renaissance music mm -hmm. and at that year they opened a kind of minor renaissance study yeah so i was a kind of first student. first yeah. yeah and also uh the renaissance music means quite a uh, you know, wide range but uh for me uh, there are main interest at that time is mm -hmm. a transition time from the uh plectrum playing mm -hmm. to the finger mm -hmm. playing for for doing this i really needed two teachers mm -hmm. yeah for that reason the scholar also offered me that okay professor crawford young crawford young yeah, yeah. for practical Black Black playing and the yeah. music theory and then Hop hopkins and smith for uh, yeah later or, repertoire yeah. so i was so lucky to have yeah. these two, two teachers teachers yeah yeah both are already retired yeah, yeah sadly yeah. but uh, i was quite lucky to have both yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, and i did their master concert uh, with both instruments both instruments yeah. that's very interesting yeah i think I, I was quite uh, really unique in that yeah. sense so ba so in this in, in total five years mm -hmm. you basically went really deep into medieval renaissance music uh, medieval uh, as a, a soloist yes yes of course i did a, quite a lot of uh, competition and then i also worked as a competition uh, mm -hmm. after almost uh, five years after i finished studying the scholar so there's a lot of ensemble experiments as me as well mm -hmm. but other uh, as a kind of soloist or kind of, yeah. you know for my main interest yeah. to show the, yeah. them to the public it's definitely renaissance music renaissance music and then the keyword is polyphony and then yeah. yeah yeah very interesting very interesting and you so you finished this um these 5 years mm -hmm. and then you you stayed around yeah working as yeah. a musician as uh, accompanying, yeah, accompanying and concerts concert and i was almost uh, i was also lucky lucky that so many musicians 
inside Switzerland and also the outside Switzerland call me as a yeah a soloist or the accompanist mm -hmm. and then uh, I, I like to travel a lot yeah not so much uh, <laughs> but I, you know, after covid uh, we, we cannot travel a lot so yeah it's, it's, it's true it's controversial but recently i you know uh, it's it's getting back it's getting back and mm -hmm. then i feel quite yeah uh, that's very nice and you are also the 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 lute accompan accompanist in scholar yeah yeah corepetition yeah, corepetition yeah I think Sam Chapman was Sam, Sam Chapman was also. We didn't talk about this, but yeah, I yeah, remember he was. Yeah, yeah. And how how long? It's, it's been some time, no? Like yeah, I this. I did the collaboration from 2014 to 19, so almost uh, uh -huh. five years. And yeah, well, for now, mm -hmm. when this video is being published, mm -hmm. we can already say uh, it. Okay, it okay. was until now; it was a secret. <laughs> secret, yeah. But what is the the the, the most recent news? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so from next semester, I will teach lute and the verse chamber music. September from this uh, 2022. To the winter semester, I mean. Yeah. Okay. In uh, uh, music school, uh, or university in Würzburg in Germany. That's very yeah. congratulations. Uh, well, I do my best, but <laughs> uh, congratulations. Well, yeah. And and is a um, you have a bachelor, and master students. What are In, the any kind like of for so. for someone that maybe is hearing this and would like to study yeah, there? There's a uh, I think the university already opened a kind of lead class to apply. Mm -hmm. And then, but for the moment, my main uh, job is to you know uh, to teach the guitar student. Okay, guitar as a, students as to, a yeah, to second kind of instrument. Second instrument and okay, to, to how to read the music, how to do mm -hmm. continue practice and so on mm -hmm. yeah but i'm quite excited to do this job. yeah of yeah. course it's yeah. a very nice it's really the first time that i yeah well as a competition in the school i already did some kind of coaching but yeah not se uh, serious in that sense yeah. That not yeah you're not yeah. responsible for the, <laughs> yeah. the student yeah. or the class yeah but anyway very i'm nice. quite uh, keen to work with the younger musicians yeah of course so, yeah. of course and Würzburg, it's like more or less the middle of germany so it's well yeah mm -hmm. it's uh yeah it's like one hour from Frankfurt. To <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. true. It's true. <laughs> so it's, it's still very... possible to. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I yeah, it's, to... it's not very far away yeah, from here, far, yeah. so it's. Yeah. Uh... And of course, and also there's kind of exchange system uh, for, I think, the uh, it's theory students. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, the relationship between the scholar and the music yeah. is quite nice. It's so. true. Yeah. So I think I well, I'm d I'm dreaming to have some kind of you know, collaboration work. With, yeah. Yeah. Nice, well, yeah, nice. Really nice. There's a lot of yeah, uh, mm. teachers or students that yeah. were here that did yeah. like um, PhDs yeah, yeah. in the university mm -hmm. and yeah. Mm -hmm. You have here you brought two CDs. Mm -hmm. So this first one is called. It, was this the first one? This is the really first. Uh, okay, thing. the travels with my lute. My lute yeah. You're playing Renaissance lute solo. Only, yeah. And uh, Milan, Luis Milan, Mudarra, Narvaez, Cabezón, Spinacino, <laughs> Milano, Molinaro, Dowland, <laughs> Kapsberger, Bach, Abel, even Abel. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, you, you did adaptation yourself? Yeah, yeah. I tell you, sorry. <laughs> um, Bergmüller, Debussy, Debussy. <laughs> Sven Berger, it's like contemporary music. He's Swedish. Wow, amazing, yeah. amazing. And, Santiago de Murcia also adapted to the to yeah, the lute. So, can you talk? Uh, can you tell us yes. a bit about this CD? Well, I can, sh I can okay. show you that. So this CD I recorded uh, at the age of twenty one, so far it's away. Okay, twenty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, well, you can just uh, focus. Yeah, this yeah, CD. I can. Focus. Yeah, so I think uh, I recorded this. Two. I recorded this on two thousand four. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the original plan was to record a kind of ensemble CD with my parents. Yeah. But uh, due to some, you know. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. So you did this still in Japan? No. No. Uh, yes. Yeah. But okay. I went to Sweden to record. Ah, to record there. Okay. So that's why uh, I, I include some uh, Swedish, Swedish music. Uh, music and also the uh, arranged by Swedish. Uh, a musician mm -hmm. and uh, this uh, Sven Berger Berger mm -hmm. is a he's a one of the pioneer in our music uh, uh, yeah. writing like uh, contemporary music for the lute no 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 no. he's a uh, wind player wind he, player yeah he okay. uh, arranged a lot of uh, music uh, okay. Renaissance music he's, he's special he specializes in the Renaissance wind uh -huh. music nice yeah 
and then yeah he is a part of you know uh, he he also encouraged our, uh, my father to go to Sweden to uh-huh. work, yeah, I see yeah. so I see this is a kind of uh, and at that time I didn't have any fixed teacher mm-hmm. so I, the the content of this CD is just I recorded what I wanted to play uh-huh I didn't care anything about okay yeah. so what's the original to have a concept or concept. Like, uh, no. yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's yeah. that's that's very nice yeah. why not so yeah. this is a kind of uh, yeah. aspect of you know mm-hmm. quite selfish lute player <laughs> so uh, wow it's your city yeah, yeah. yeah. and and uh, so in the end there's almost okay i think majority of the music is not the original lute music here yeah see. there's a lot how yeah. how was it to to, I'm very interested to hear the the, the Debussy. It. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to the Debussy. Yeah. Is is this CD also like uh, online somewhere in streaming platform? This is uh, appeared already in uh, various sub- subscribe channel. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Spotify, Apple Music, okay. and so on. Good, yeah. good. Yeah. So I'm definitely mm. uh, I'm I'm interested to see yeah. to, to the, hear the Debussy. And Debussy. the program note I already uh, wrote in English as well. So okay. Yeah. Very nice. So this is one side of you know well, me playing the lute as a kind of okay now I can play everything with my Renaissance lute, <laughs> awesome. and then later okay I changed my mind a bit mm-hmm. yeah and okay but now I really need to focus on what is the original lute music yeah okay, <laughs> okay. and so then this ca- is the result and then and then came this yeah. CD it's called yeah. Polyphony and Diminution Shin, also yeah. you playing solo Renaissance lute yeah. so people so can one. see here yeah. the 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 uh, yeah, front cover, front cover. Um, okay this is a, a famous uh, interior of the, the building in rome yeah. designed by Raphael. yeah yeah and the repertoire goes a little bit for mm-hmm. so capirola tinctori so original music for the lute and mm-hmm. also uh, mm-hmm. intabulations yeah, yeah, yeah. from you mm-hmm. Capirolo Tintoris, Martini, Da Milano, mm. Borrono, Da Crema, Paladin, or this this intabulation from Cocky Colpartieri from Paladin. Yes, it's, uh, such a nice it's so mm-hmm. it's it's perfect because mm-hmm. it uh, the, the madrigal it's almost entirely written mm. down. Read, yeah. Like there's f- very few notes that are not there, yeah. and it's so under the fingers. Yeah, yeah. It's so idiomatic. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Everything is great. It's amazing. Le Roi, Falaise, De Rip, uh, Festive Coli, Palestrina, mm-hmm. um, Philip van Wilde, Bessa, Ferrabosco, Dowland, Cutting Bachelor, mm-hmm. and Gosten, Dalla Gostenna, Giovanni Battista Dalla Gostenna. I didn't know this. Already. Before. And um, so. Polyphony and diminution. So you do also diminutions, but you're always playing one lute. You didn't do with this uh, CD. I used two lutes. For the uh, first half, I used uh, six chords A lute, mm-hmm. the higher pitch. And mm-hmm. the later uh, repertoire, I used uh, the same instrument here, using uh-huh. so uh, eight chords lute. Uh huh. And these mm-hmm. madrigals, when you play and you're you're doing diminutions, you're doing together with the madrigal. It's not separate. It's like I mean, it's, it's not like a terzi diminution. I think it's already written, uh, written out, written out like this. Yeah. written out diminutions. Yeah. Okay. But can you notice what what I'm um, quite strict about ordering the piece here? With the order of the pieces. Yeah, because unlike this is kind of quite random, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But here I'm quite opposite in many sense. Well, the first one is not the oldest, but in, uh-huh. in generally the pieces, the order of the pieces are quite chronological. Okay, the order of the pieces yeah. there appeared, yeah. Yeah. And uh-huh. Anything else? Now I can. I trying to find some <laughs> some concept here. Okay. Maybe you can think about the European map in your. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Well, you have like a. Sp- you start like in the order of the pieces. Oh, yeah, order of the pieces. So, Espana, mm-hmm. that's Espana Prima. Is this like the the oldest form of Spania? One of the oldest uh, form of Spania. Then you have a piece from Tinctoris, Les Souvenirs, Boniers. But you're mixing like 
like um, uh, secular music mm -hmm. and dances, dances and instrumental pieces. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a big mix. Mm -hmm. Well, think about where these musicians or lute players were active. Aha! Yeah. So they were always in the same place. Well, uh, well, they are grouped by the places. Group, yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started so, for, first for the Italian. The Italian composers. composers. Yeah, Fran yeah then France. Yeah, France. Went up to France. Yeah. And then. And then mm -hmm. you. So Falaise is you're still in France. Yes, it, yeah, then you went northern, to yeah. yeah to the northern to yeah. the low countries. Yeah, low countries. And then I ended up with the yeah, in English. Yeah. So yeah. it's a, like a whole journey. It's a trip. Yeah. Yeah, it's so a journey. This is a kind of another travel with my lute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say. But uh, my, I have yeah, a kind of strong idea that how the idea of playing the polyphony came mm -hmm. throughout the activity of the lute players. Yeah. 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 And this uh, kind of, uh, well, I wanted to draw a kind of brief roadmap of how this. Uh, rich repertoire of playing polyphony in music. different places and, and um, it's very uh, obvious that you know the first uh, the first time that they did this uh, practice quite seriously was uh, which came from uh, Konrad Paumann mm -hmm. yeah uh, he was mm -hmm. active in uh, Germany mm -hmm. and then he traveled to Ferrara mm -hmm. uh, and then played some you know polyphony music with her his people and then the tinctorus witnessed this kind of the practice and he okay he just yeah. wrote some kind of various uh, contrapuntal pieces okay and then maybe the pietro bono or this uh, no, the scales for Luton, Luton also play this kind of yeah uh, so it's like uh, okay who is doing this kind of newest yeah. latest practice okay mm -hmm. why not we can and then they abandoned to play with a thing with a plectrum okay if they are really, if they uh, would have only be interested in uh, diminutions, mm -hmm. they, I think they would have been stayed, stayed with the plectrum, with but, makes yeah but, everything um, easier. Yeah, it isn't. Yeah, but the history was not that. Mm -hmm. the, the result was they abandoned. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, I don't want to say these two uh, practices are just you know. Uh, black and white. It's mm -hmm. really a co coexisting period. Yes, especially yes. The, uh, the time of Francisco de Milano. So I really yes. uh, want to focus on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I really, I was very in interested in this transition period. Mm -hmm. What motivated the mm -hmm. mutinist, yeah, mm -hmm. to play polyphony and diminution together? Yeah. yeah. And this is a kind of strong tradition which ends almost in the time of. Uh, or Morinaro. Yeah. 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 Or, yeah, I think this uh, is a kind of, you know, homage to uh, say that. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah, you, you f we find so many. Mm. It's, it's almost impossible to find a tabulation from a vocal piece that yeah. there are not mm, diminutions, mm. some Diminution. type of diminutions yeah. written down. Yeah, written down. So, yeah. well, for example, this, uh, the recent we found the Kapsberger material diminution mm -hmm. uh, for Theobro. Mm -hmm. Th that is based on completely another yeah. uh, mind, you know? Yeah. 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 But as a lute. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And also for the Baroque or French Baroque lute music, uh, this kind of element also disappeared. Yes. Yeah. It was already another, another. another thing. Yeah. 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 It's true. It's but true. But this, this includes a whole, well, almost over centuries you know mm -hmm. long long yeah it journey. goes yeah yeah and then um, i really wanted to focus on this uh practice mm -hmm. yeah. so uh this it is about the 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 as the title says polyphony and diminution mm -hmm. and you explore the um, the the polyphonic pieces from the renaissance in going through a tour mm -hmm. from different countries in Europe mm -hmm. and also how it was mm -hmm. extremely connected with diminutions yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. we found a lot of we find a lot yeah. of material mm -hmm. published mm -hmm. on also manuscripts of, manuscript, yeah. of diminutions mm -hmm. that the, the, the mm -hmm. Siena manuscript has so many diminutions yeah, yeah, yeah. have uh, only only mm -hmm. Encore and Festive and Quali mm -hmm. there's like four or five yeah, yeah. Uh, 
and or the Barbarino yeah, yeah. Recent the Barbarino online. also yeah yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I also asked mm-hmm. sometimes here is that when we analyze some intabulations mm-hmm. of vocal pieces mm-hmm. usually there are a lot of them that are extremely difficult to play mm-hmm. because you see that whoever tried to intabulate try to keep very well mm-hmm. like all the voices of the original yeah and it starts to get some pieces like very n- non-idiomatic for <laughs> the lute uh-huh. and oppose like for example the piece from uh-huh. the, the entablation from Paladin of uh-huh. Uncoffe uh-huh. Compartido uh-huh. which is uh-huh. extremely uh-huh. playable uh-huh. and nice and all the voices are there and of uh-huh. course depends a lot on the vocal piece uh-huh. but do you think that the the this these entablations uh, there are some intabulations that are really not meant to be played mm-hmm. or and it's more to study the polyphony or study mm-hmm. the counterpoint mm-hmm. and other intabulations that are more mm-hmm. playable they were meant to be played or this was mm-hmm. more like a very easy and practical way to write all the polyphony mm-hmm. so you can but not necessarily to mm-hmm. play everything okay. that is there uh, in general in the if in the intabulation mm-hmm. I mean if no diminution is written in, this is first regarded as a score, mm-hmm. starting score. Yeah, this is very clear from what we see from Galilei's uh, Il Fronimo. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he because of his strong personality, mm-hmm. we, we we tend to misunderstood this importance mm-hmm. of this source. But uh, so first of all, the four voice polyphony or five part polyphony, six voice polyphony it's really uh, almost impossible to mm-hmm. play uh, as a kind of a literal intabulation yeah yeah and then after seeing this uh, kind of strict intabulations our, our lutenist is free to simplify it mm-hmm. yeah and add some diminution at his will mm-hmm. yeah so this is my goal mm-hmm. somehow but on the other hand there's a, a quite playable uh, mm-hmm. intabulations mm-hmm. yeah and that was often seen in the manuscript, written in uh, some ornament sign or the yeah. some finger instructions. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to be very alert for what kind of category category in this uh, intabulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, should be classified. Yeah. Even the Galilei, <coughs> even yeah. the Galilei source. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a very interesting book by Kangeliem about this mm-hmm. the, about the Fronimo. Yeah. And. He compares at one time. Mm-hmm. I, I don't remember mm-hmm. which diminution, mm-hmm. which which madrigal it is now. Mm-hmm. That one version mm-hmm. intabulated by Galilei, mm-hmm. extremely complicated, mm-hmm. like with all the voices mm-hmm. and diminutions. Yeah. And then another version of the same madrigal, mm-hmm. but one of the voices is to a singer to be sung. Yeah, singer, yeah. And in this version, I think this is where the bass is uh, written in. The bass is, yeah, is, yeah. is for the bass. Yeah, the bass. And it, and in this version what is left to play by mm-hmm. the lutenist is mm. even easier yeah. than if, if it was if you only took out the bass mm-hmm. voice and mm-hmm. played everything else mm-hmm. of the madrigal mm-hmm. what Galileo writes is even less mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. and this mm-hmm. Kangelem like mm-hmm. writes that mm-hmm. this version is probably very mm-hmm. we can really imagine that this mm-hmm. version with the singer line mm-hmm. was meant to be yeah. performed, performed yeah. because otherwise why would he yeah. write this <laughs> like yeah. Of course. And the tablature, when mm-hmm. he has to do everything himself, mm-hmm. it's he even complicates it yeah, even yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. This is also true with some German lute sources yeah. that uh, the German lute tablature is most uh, uh, practical in mm-hmm. a sense to not because of economizing the paper, but because also to identify to the voices, the, to to you know to differentiate the each yeah. voices. Yeah, yeah. yeah? So this is uh, somehow that we really need to learn mm-hmm. and. Um, I also suggest one thing more because uh, why not we can play this little intabulation as a lute duo or lute trio so that the each players can abstract yeah their part or e- even the inner yeah. part. Well, abstracting inner part from written out tablets is quite it's difficult. It's uh, because sometimes yeah. we we have a more you know easier way to yeah, of course, of course, of course. And how can you really know what? Mm each voice is doing yeah do it. yeah, yeah. It, they yeah. can be crossing, crossing. the tablature is the same yeah. yeah but after 
studying so hard or only yeah. focusing this kind of yeah. things it can possible it can be possible yeah for sure and then um, what i did for long long time ago is that there's a uh it's a ritual called by anybody padvano that mm-hmm. galilei quote as a kind of masterpiece mm-hmm. to study and i compare the the original part four part setting to the galilei's interpolation mm-hmm. it's Partly quite literal, and then he had some diminutions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what I did was to place the individual part from the Anibal Padvano and try to play like you know this, with a separate part at the first glance. Yeah. And how was it? Okay, we, it's really come to the point that I have to memorize the whole piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. And even yeah, not can, uh, yeah. uh, writing the, all the entrances of the, uh, mm-hmm. or the here the tenor mm-hmm. uh, came in or, or so on. Yeah. But it's after uh, spending almost one week, <laughs> I just reached in the first 30 semi braves. Okay? <laughs> but I, I did think about it's not impossible. Okay. It's not impossible. Okay. The other part, it's possible if yeah. we really focus on it. Yeah. And that was, that is kind of practice that the lute player had had to have uh, to to have uh, had to do. S- yeah. The same thing with the uh, viola mano players, mm-hmm. like Bermuda sets. Mm-hmm. Or I don't think it's a, like a total lie that Narvaez could play. You know, the four yeah. different the f- polyphony the four, yeah. upon the pre-existing yeah. four voice polyphony. Mm-hmm. Or like uh, Antonio de Cabezón, yeah, mm-hmm. or Fueliana. Yeah. Yeah. After seeing this kind of marvelous example, yeah. partly because they are kind of blind, I have mm-hmm. to say, because uh, for them, there's no notion of how the horizontal or yeah. the, how the vertical. Yeah. I think for us, it is quite strict. You know, we are so fixed on the written out yeah. tradition. But for, true. for this kind of certain expert, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and hidden it, with this, yeah. you know, it was a musical practice also that it's so yeah. distant yeah. from what we do today as yeah, a to today. as a classical musician. Yes, and, yeah, and like it was like mm-hmm. like also Sam said like it yeah. was some years ago considered impossible to play continuo. Yeah. Like how can you play how continuo? Play how can you improvise and, and continue yeah. with the numbers? And now it's something that's yeah. majorly done yes, without. Exactly. It's not like a you know. Mm something seen as yeah, impossible yeah. it's a yeah, technique yeah. that you learn Technical. but uh, the approach to this music yeah, of sir. course and now this also, is also also yeah. yeah this is like a starting point yeah yeah, yeah it's really yeah. a starting point of my this is not a, like a result of my yeah you know study it's really i have to start from this <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah. Uh, what was the, the mind hidden in this kind of composition or yeah. written out example and um, now i came to the kind of topic of that the modern lutenist conf- is confronting to this big dilemma yeah okay well, and also at, on top of that mm-hmm. at this time they were playing one type of lute mm-hmm. and and one style yeah the the, the modern lutenist mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we have so many instruments so yeah. many centuries so yeah. many things to do yeah and how how, how, how do you personally <laughs> deal with that well i'm a, like a I'm a Japanese. I'm non-European. Mm-hmm. Well, and you know my appearance is like this. Mm-hmm. So, well, I really cannot act like a real uh, mu- uh, Renaissance lead player. Yeah, in that strict sense. But in my mind, I try to be an actor always. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I have to play as a Dowland, I try to be a Dowland. Mm-hmm. I collect all the information, all the finger patterns mm-hmm. of the, what Dowland did from mm-hmm. his piece and then I adapt to okay with this piece I try to be like Dowland and then I use all the technique or the musical fragments or the idiom that Dowland used uh, okay uh, then uh, I can I, I also try to be like a Durip or the, the Mudala whatever mm-hmm. yeah so each time I focus on the one source mm-hmm. or the one composer one newtonist mm-hmm. i really try to be that person mm-hmm. yeah and m- try not never mix them mm-hmm. yeah but technically also technically like, also uh-huh. yeah so 
when you play Dowland, do you play thumb in, thumb out? Well, this is also a good question because Dowland also switching his yeah. technique from him. Yeah, I'm more and more uh, d in the sense of uh, uh, I'm more and more uh, going to the thumb out mm -hmm. technique for the laid down pieces, but still I'm focusing on the mm -hmm. uh, you know the early 16th century music. So yeah. my main technique is uh, uh, somehow I am thumb in. Thumb, thumb in. Yeah. yeah. That that that, that mm. brings up a lot of questions because yeah. well only in Renaissance only in Renaissance, only yes. Renaissance there are so many differences yeah. if you go to Spain yeah then you have like yeah. Fuenjana yeah. Fuenjana said that this yeah. this is the best you the can best do thing. they have the Dilio yeah and this is a really kind of a, a strong hero, no it yeah yeah. Come from the yeah exactly Abra. exactly yeah. so you have the Spanish yeah. way with the thumb out mm -hmm. and yeah. you have the, the Dilio you just was yes, on one finger yeah. you had E M yeah. and all these differences and that's yeah. only Spain that's and of course and um and even the dowland time you even know? the dowland time Dowl yeah. when dowland tried to shift his technique to thumb in the thomas robinson still suggests yeah yeah. To play. yeah yeah and thomas that's mainly for the amateurs 17th actually. century and still yeah. thumb in yeah well that's so it, it's very and that's just <laughs> one instrument that's, one that's one instrument. just one instrument yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. if you put baroque lute or mm -hmm. tiobo or art tiobo. lute and yeah, yeah. This is a big dilemma for us. It's yeah? it's it's a big, especially if you have your approach of yeah. trying to incorporate yeah. each each yeah. composer mm -hmm. or each way that mm -hmm. he probably did. Yeah, that's yeah even a step further. It's a step further, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this we really have to think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, luckily enough, uh, I started the, the lute from more or less from throughout this you know the colonial medical order. Mm -hmm. So my present musical knowledge is still not based on this 18th century 19th century kind of uh, no? mm -hmm. I, a strong music theory idea yeah uh, this is for me it's kind of privilege i must say mm -hmm. but inside renaissance music i first studied uh, the more or less the late 16th century music yeah and then i try go back to the you know the early uh, 16th century music or even the late 15th century music mm -hmm. this became so such a difficult matter yeah yeah but uh, somehow the, the, i'm the enjoying yeah the further conflict. back we go the <laughs> less information <laughs> we have which you yeah yeah makes but it try to think less information is sometimes good yeah of course you have more freedom the freedom or m too much information it's is, also bad it's but uh, because yeah. why on earth we have we you know for example, uh, the Pablo Casals mm -hmm. or this kind of uh, also Rubinstein, mm -hmm. they already died for you know. Yeah. But their way of playing never been thought of a kind of our music practice because yeah. there's so many recordings, videos, mm -hmm. documents, their you know interviews and so on. We are so rich with you know studying with their music performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if we try to, well let's say imitate their performance it's no more our music <laughs> yeah, yeah. practice because yeah. there's so many uh, information left too much mm -hmm. information left mm -hmm. okay on the other hand there's too little uh, uh, small information left mm -hmm. this means we have to think about too much yeah and there's a d discussion mm -hmm. okay so there will be a kind of good balanced middle pointer. ground yeah. yeah and this somehow <laughs> this is a clue that why certain repertoire is very uh, kind of became a big trend or the, mm -hmm. or the issue for the yeah. music uh, performance yeah we are kind of based on this kind of uh, good balance yeah yeah and also think about it what happened if the, we have more than 600 surviving lute pieces by john dowland <laughs> <laughs> or what happened if we have only one fantasy left by Francesco da Milano? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is quite uh, as a as a result of the historical event. Thanks or thanks to this historical event, we have certain amount of repertoire. Not too much, but yeah, not, not it's true. Yeah. And also the same yeah. with the Bach cantata as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, yeah. So and this is uh, quite this, uh, yeah. our modern. And what would yeah. happen if we could hear yeah, yeah. an interpretation of the Milano? Mm -hmm. yeah. Would 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 we be? <coughs> would we find it good or bad? 
I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, in the yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is what after. What would we think? Yeah. yeah uh, after doing this Francesco da Milano pro- project, what uh, what I did in the pandemic. Time? I d- yeah. I, I, I had this. Im- I I, yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I cannot forget. No 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 no. It's okay. <coughs> no, I was. You are talking. Uh, I cannot yeah. forget to mm-hmm. to ask about the the, yeah, the, the okay. Milano project. <laughs> yes, that was. We have to talk about this. You recorded every piece, every ritual card and fantasies. Yeah, except in tabulations. Yeah. yeah, except in tabulations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was uh, how many pieces are? Uh, well, uh, over uh, one hundred fifteen. One hundred fifteen. Yeah. That was uh, how. Yeah. How did the idea came and how was it to to do it? <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, uh, I lost uh, almost all the concert activities. Mm. Yeah, plenty of time left, mm-hmm. and then you know yeah, some, during the pandemic come, everything come, canceled. Come, yeah, and then more or less I you know my motivation got quite yeah. Much, quite I think the same with all yeah with things. everyone. Yeah, but on the other hand, this is a kind of uh, good. Mm-hmm. Time mm-hmm. to focus just one thing, mm-hmm. yeah. And then I thought about uh, have 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 a, I thought about how much extent I know about Francesco's music because I just playing Francesco the music like you know yeah uh, you pick, pick one you pick, pick one, one okay pick this is uh, quite uh, interesting this is a company everybody playing or something mm-hmm. but there's no okay mm-hmm. uh, clear knowledge about the sources or you know m- maybe some pieces are kind of uh, attributed to Francesco Milano without any care or something and uh, okay so first of all I classified all the Francesco's piece yeah according to the sources and then I, you know, make some plan. Okay, maybe this is possible to do a kind of twice, twice a week video project. Yeah, and it's uh, it's very nice uh, length for the whole year. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then I thought about okay, but playing uh, everything uh, recorded, this is quite obvious, you know. So let's do everything unedited. <laughs> so even the longest fantasy. I am played with no yeah, yeah 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 uh, so that's because I uh, some of them I played some shit in the yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. but you know thanks to modern technology we can easily exactly cut it. exactly but I had to do something different because how it yeah you know, to show that d- d- yeah. like a concert yeah, yeah it's like a concert a, yeah yeah now this is a big challenge for me but after playing these old fantasy and retail cards I overcome some of the well allergy or a kind of you know. The fearness of yeah. uh, playing uh, his music, actually. yeah, and then well, now I could play a kind of small Richard Carl with mm-hmm. the Fantasia in 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 his manner, yeah, because pl- yeah. playing all <laughs> this yeah. Richard Carl and Fantasia, I got some idioms. So exactly, yeah. exactly. When yeah. you play a lot of yeah, the so repertoire, you start so, to get. Yeah. Of course, I didn't the, spend whole year. I you yeah. know, I recorded uh, almost everything in half an e- half an year, mm-hmm. but. For that period, I almost only played Francesco oh, Milano. Like, yeah. And this is kind of privilege, you know, only yeah. allowed in this yeah, pandemic. Yeah. And then Did I, you end up liking more Francesco da Milano? Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and also, my love to uh, my love to Francesco da Milano, of course, but also the I feel the love from the pe- from the people from his period. Mm-hmm. Because only I think uh, over thirty pieces is published uh, was published in his lifetime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anything above, <laughs> anything other than that. Yeah. Yeah. He was already dead. Or yeah. Dead or uh, some fake pieces. Yeah. <laughs> must have been. But even this fact shows that uh, how come that the single composer appeared so yeah, many times. So many yeah. times, even in the yeah, uh, the seventeenth century manuscript manuscript has the some pieces by Francesca. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. Far away in in England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This tells us a lot of things. It is is true. He he's he was alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his of. music was really cherished. Yeah. yeah. So um, even the republications, like yeah, yeah. so many. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why I used uh, eight course lute for the late sources mm-hmm. yeah so in that yeah, case exactly. I, I was acted like a <laughs> yeah late 
uh, 16th century musicians who admired Francesco da Milano in his exactly. life. Exactly. For you, it would not be, or even like, for example, if you would play a mm -hmm. piece from the beginning of Francesco mm -hmm. only with six courses mm -hmm. and you have an eight course lute mm -hmm. or seven course lute, yeah. would you use it, the bass, even now and then? Bass, uh, the like the, the, the strings that you know that uh -huh. he didn't have? Well, uh, using eight course lute compared with the six course lute means we have more overtones. Yeah. yeah? The rich sonority and then um, certain Francesco pieces sounded like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, in his uh, after yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is a, like a, we have to decide in which uh, standing point of the you know the mm -hmm. idea of the sounding and um, and also in the concert uh, situation we we cannot carry more. Than yeah, of course. Uh, that's a, yeah. another story. Another story, <laughs> but. Um, for playing Francesco da Milano piece, I try to have a light sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes I tune a little bit, little bit higher or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To try to give mm -hmm. this kind of atmosphere mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. But on the other hand, I don't like to play uh, the Francesco da Milano and a Dowland in the same program. Yeah. Yeah. It somehow sacrifices the, the yeah. other or the both. Yeah. 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 It's true. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. We talk a lot, uh, well, also like with uh, about a, a lot of subjects, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know why. I get, I was talking about this camera. We had some technical problems. One of the cameras stopped uh -huh. because it's heated. But anyway, because we our still our we still have heated, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we still have two cameras working now, okay, okay, uh, okay. but here? it's fine. It's fine here, mm -hmm, there, mm -hmm. and. Um, um, no, it's been very interesting because you, you specialize so much in mm -hmm. this repertoire of mm -hmm. Renaissance, mm -hmm. and it's also like mm. my favorite, or mm -hmm. one of mm -hmm. my favorites. Mm -hmm. I, it's really a passion, mm -hmm. and you have so much music, and you really mm. go into yeah. it like the most you can, yeah. and that's really incredible. Mm. And this project of Francesco mm. da Milano, it you, anyone can see that it yeah. took a lot of effort yeah. to do it, and I think a lot of people are grateful that you did because now. We also have like on YouTube, uh, <laughs> at least you like can. you have yeah. at least at least one version of every piece that you can find of Francesco da Milano yeah, yeah, yeah. to yeah. to hear it. Well, uh, I only played the ritual and fantasies, and there's some intabulation left. Yes. So if I have well more, a little bit uh, energy enough, yeah. Why not? Yeah. yeah. But at, at some point, I can. cannot do like an annual project because <laughs> it's not much. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was also a pandemic, yeah, yeah, pandemic. Uh, yeah. project yeah. that but, allowed us to have but time. Don't uh, uh, take it wrongly because uh, yeah. I'm still keeping the interest in Francisco de Milano. <laughs> I'm not a person. Now. Okay, this year, this year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Um, is there like some topic that you'd like to talk about that we didn't? Well, mm, well, the future of our modern dignity. Yes. What do you <laughs> What do you have to say about that? Well, uh, first of all, um, the lute players are quite rich uh, in their repertoires and mm -hmm. the sources as well. The modern lute players, us, I mean, for our generation, we are quite lucky because so many primary sources. Mm -hmm. or their uh, historical documents were online yeah without mm -hmm. you know, s taking extra time to copy or scanning yeah so on the other hand more and more this kind of kind of information uh, comes mm -hmm. uh, we are kind of losing the time to practice <laughs> yeah so what yeah. is the balance between mm -hmm. yeah and then sometimes more and more we know about the historical fact this means more and more we have a kind of there is a kind of strict mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so we, more and more less and less we have freedom mm -hmm. yeah and this is a kind of balance that we really have to think about also and also for the audiences as well mm -hmm. yeah and uh, the most of the lutenists that i admired including my teacher Hopi, it looks like they never stop learning mm -hmm. yeah and then they always told me that like that okay when i i am to be reborn i want to be a lutenist again <laughs> yeah. to continue to, to yeah. continue yeah. because the the whole life of the lutenist yeah. is to 
Yeah. Too short. To do. Too short for so much yeah. repertoire. Yeah. yeah. And uh, of course, I really want to, to play the continuo mm -hmm. more. Or the, I also have, uh, I'm also a big fan of the Baroque guitar mm -hmm. music, mm -hmm. which I'm personally playing. And mm -hmm. um, well, I'm also a French lute, mm, friend, early French lute music. So for, for me, a yeah. kind of you know one of the great yeah. harvest of the Baroque lute music. Yeah. And then, um, but think about these kind of things uh, every day, and then uh, this scattered information yeah. going in my mind. Yeah, I tend to lose. Okay, where am I? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, and then um, also, uh, I have to say that I was lucky enough to study five years in the scholar, mm -hmm. but still I felt that that was too short. Yeah, yeah. So don't think that the 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 finish of the St uh, st finish studying in the musical school is the end of your mm -hmm. studying years mm -hmm. yeah i think i learned more after i finished yes. the school yes yeah reading the sources playing with other musicians i agree and never you. stop and then once i stopped learning or the, to be interested in uh, this kind of things um i think i i cannot play a little yeah <laughs> You're completely right. Yeah. I agree with you. I think, um, mm. and also a lot of things that we learn through the mm. when you're still <coughs> studying it. Mm -hmm. Maybe especially with music, because mm -hmm. music is a is a physical yeah, yeah. process. It's process. a mechanical mm -hmm. process. A lot of it. Mm -hmm. The first thing that you have to do, you have to understand in yeah. your mind yeah. what your teacher is saying and mm -hmm. what he's passing to mm -hmm. you. It doesn't mean that you'll be able to mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It still yeah. takes some time of processing until yeah, yeah. until your body get it. Yeah, take some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and remember saying to some stu some teachers that I had like, well, these were great. I think I need mm -hmm. five to ten years to put in practice everything mm -hmm. that I learned here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it takes time yeah. and effort and practice, yeah. and then at some points your body starts mm -hmm. to understand, mm -hmm. and you start to experiment more. Mm -hmm. I learned a yeah. lot since I stopped studying because I had mm -hmm. the time to. Mm -hmm process everything by yeah. myself that's true. and to try things and other things mm -hmm. and other ways of doing it mm -hmm. that i really haven't asked mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. because you're always thinking of the recital that you have to prepare yeah. or the other sub <laughs> other thing that you have yeah, to prepare yeah, and the guy you have to accompany mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this this alone moment with the instrument it's mm -hmm. crucial yeah, yeah. like to mm -hmm. to really mm -hmm. get yourself deep mm -hmm. into it yeah. and um well, I don't do a kind of fixed daily practice. I, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not a kind of uh, athlete like playing. Yeah. But once I'm get really into lute music, I really cannot stop playing. Stop. Yeah. And the best moment for me playing the lute is just uh, ten minutes after I got out from the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, taking a bath. Yeah. 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 So then my fingers are quite smooth <laughs> and yeah, then yeah. everything relaxed. Yeah. And that's a moment to play for me. Yeah. And then, and also, I, uh, the moment that I just pluck the mm -hmm. double string, mm -hmm. and I, I always say, okay, th that's the moment. Yeah, I, I live for this moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's amazing. And yeah, then, and then even I played in a kind of concert situation or kind of competition, okay, exams or whatever, this kind of stressful moment. Mm -hmm. I tried to, you know imagine myself like uh, that condition okay now I yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah yeah that's like, really important also yeah, yeah. to think about this yeah. so when you get to these moments no, yeah. you're yeah. More, you're more prepared more pre yeah. prepared yeah and uh, this is uh, like a kind of mind control when i'm yeah. doing a, a kind of solo things mm -hmm. and then to, in playing the ensembles i really want to play to enjoy the music with mm -hmm. others yeah not like a and I'm competent or yeah. yeah and sometimes uh, I have to get everything yeah. right yeah, this, and this. Oh, I also really like to sing for myself mm -hmm. well uh, your teacher also encouraged me to do a singing lute music <laughs> <laughs> yeah this I really really liked a lot yeah and now in Basel this became a big trend of playing yes, and a lot of people doing yeah. it yeah but uh, it's not uh, because of their career but uh, for their basic uh, knowledge of music yeah of course yeah uh, for me when I always have the, the problem with, okay, analyze the music, what are, how to figure the music, 
I try to sing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do that also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's very important. It's yeah. not to be really super. Exactly. Know, it's not to be a singer, yeah, yeah, or yeah, it's yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. But you understand yeah, yeah. the music, and I yeah. and I say to my students also like, yeah. it's very important yeah. to mm -hmm. to be able to do it and to understand yeah, the counterpoint. Yeah. To, yeah. Th then you know that you yeah. really know it. Know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, I also play the Renaissance viol mm -hmm. in the concert. So. Uh, whenever I play when the Renaissance uh, yeah. polyphony from the part, mm -hmm. I also imagine like, okay, what if if I put this line to the yeah. tablature or, or just feel like uh, yeah. I'm abstracting one of my line from that kind of tablature? Or something. Yeah. So always like uh, going yeah. back, and, yeah. And this kind of ex exchange the ideas also, you know, makes me more familiar to this kind of music and so, so, you know this is kind of a danger just focusing only with your yeah. solo music uh, and so so th this need need to be a good balance yeah. yes uh, we have so much information from everywhere yeah, now yeah. and to keep everything going yeah. and as freelancer musicians so, you have to to do so much work yeah, yeah. That is not music. <laughs> also, <laughs> well, it's like you know, to get concerts and mm -hmm. to do this and to do yeah, that and to prepare and to yeah. da, da, organizing and yeah. it's a lot of things. Yeah. It's a lot of things together. And mm -hmm. but I think we have to to always to try to have these special yeah, moments that you said to just take your instrument and yeah, yeah. have the pleasure of playing. Yeah, you know, the, the yeah. otherwise, what is the point? <laughs> yeah, the yeah, point? Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, Rio, can I pleasure. say Rio? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with a pleasure. Thanks yeah. a lot for coming. It mm -hmm. was a very nice talk. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about the camera. The camera gave up because mm -hmm. we are working. talking a lot. <laughs> this one, I hope yeah. it's working still. <laughs> and um, hope to see you soon mm. uh, here around Basel. Mm -hmm. And good luck in Würzburg. Yeah. And if all the still best. allowed to publish. Too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you know, it's, by that time, it's yeah, yeah. it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Mm -hmm. And all the best, and see you soon. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Time. With a pleasure. Ciao, see you next time.